Welcome to the second of Biz Group's Industry Insight Seminars. Today I'm delighted to be joined by Mihir Mukherjee, a very good friend of Biz Group, Vice President of Global Sales at one of our partners, Experience Point. Mihir, welcome. Thank you for joining us today. Thanks, Chris. It's an absolute pleasure to be here, my friend. Okay, so one of the other things that I wanted to talk about whilst I had you is, is what makes organisations more creatively competitive? Um, and why do you think that's important? Wow, that's a, that's a good question. Um, I think uh, agility and the ability to move fast uh, to keep up with changing consumer behaviour is key. Uh, especially in this e economy and this uh, environment, uh, but even in general, like when you look at the um, S&P index over the last 15 years, more than half those organizations don't exist on the S&P index any longer as leaders. Uh, and the sole reason for that is the relevancy gap between what their consumers wanted and what they were innovating on uh, just became too far. And then other competitors came in to fill that gap. So the agility and ability to move fast and keep in touch with your consumer behavior is key. Um, I think a deep understanding of your consumer can be a competitive advantage. It allows you to design products based on their wants and needs, uh, as opposed to any predetermined bias you might have around your consumer segment. Uh, and that keeps you uh, relevant longer term, right? So it isn't about just the next big idea. It's about how do you have that culture built into your organization um, that, that typically um, transcends you know, what the, what the CEO's tenure might be in the business. So that doesn't create these kind of Apple kind of companies, right? Um, so yeah, I, I would just say, you know, it's important to stay relevant. Uh, otherwise you risk obsolescence. Yeah, okay, no, good point. I, I get that entirely. Um, and it's interesting there, you mentioned sort of the, the C-level and those kind of individuals. I, I know from talking to you in the past, that's very much the kind of person that you are speaking with, isn't it? You, you're going straight to the top when you're talking about change and innovation and all those different things. Yes. Um, when you think about the aspects of uh, what a C-level executive care about, um, it's about business performance uh, and it's about unlocking their greatest asset, which is their people. Mm -hmm. So I haven't met a C-level executive yet that said, I, I love my customers, I hate my people or vice versa. Right? <laughs> it, is, it is usually in tandem. And in fact, some of the greatest CEOs of the world say, you know, take care of your people and they will take care of your customers. So when you put that in the context of um, one of the key buzzwords of our industries today, which is digital transformation, um, you can actually break that down to people, process, and technology, which again, isn't something unique to EP, like everybody does it in the tech space. Uh, but most people will end up focusing on the process and technology because it's tangible, there's a the hard dollar value to it, it's easy to understand, there's project plans and Gantt charts, and it just pleases people with operational efficiency DNAs. Um, but the people portion of it, to my earlier story, gets stuck with emails or enablement plans. Um, and that's a big missed opportunity there. Uh, and that's what we like to focus on, which is the workforce transformation aspect. But that's not a learning and development problem. There's a portion of learning and development there that we absolutely address and do and work with. Uh, mm -hmm. But then there's also the element of, well, what business outcomes would these people enable? And how might you allow them a safe space to not just build that culture of innovation that we've been talking about, but how do you introduce that into their daily jobs to make them do things better and maybe differently? 